Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the AMD Radeon RX 580 here just turned 6 years old. If you bought one of the 8GB models back in 2017 and decided to hold on to it then I don't need to tell you what a great investment that was. For between $230 and $300 depending on the model, the 580 offered excellent 1080p gaming performance and even held its own at 1440p, giving Nvidia's now legendary 1060 a good run for its money. These days I dare say that the 580 will come out on top in most gaming comparisons, not to mention it might even cost you less depending on where you live. I tested this the other day in pairing with a Ryzen 5 2600 and spoke about how well the two components work together, but in today's one I'm sticking the 580 in my i5 12400F system with 32 gigs of RAM to get the absolute most out of it. This card has no business being this capable in 2023, and I'm pretty sure no one expected it to hold its own for so long. Sure, we may need to reduce the settings to medium or low in some cases, but for less than £100 or dollars, it's still a solid choice for a low-cost 1080p gaming rig. The version I'm using is the Gigabyte Gaming Edition. You can buy new 580s with less cores that I've seen plenty of positive reviews about as well, but this is of course one of the OG 2304 core cards. And of course, as with all used cards, you may not necessarily know the history of it, so always bear that in mind. Now I'm going to try and avoid using FSR where possible just to showcase the power that this card still has. It's still really capable. Spider-Man Remastered is the first game here. 1080p is the resolution I've stuck with because this is very much the ideal resolution for this thing in 2023. I went with a medium preset and TAA and here we averaged 63 FPS with really solid 1.1% lows. There were no real status to speak of and these are definitely the settings I'd stick with if I was using the 580 in a modern system with 32 gigs of RAM as I am here. This is quite a CPU intensive game so a fast processor is definitely handy but the 580 more than handles itself in this one. Forza Horizon 5 is always a pleasure to test because it's very well optimised here at 1080p high preset with TAA enabled, 72 FPS on average with 1.1% lows that also stayed above 60. You might notice one or two dips below this perhaps in busy town races but for the most part this average and the performance overall is going to remain really solid with a card like this. How well the 4 gig 580 does in 2023? Well that's a totally different matter. Of course less VRAM as well may mean that a few games are rather limited in terms of what you can do with the settings, especially texture options. And I think considering that the price difference between the four and eight gig cards can be very minimal, especially here in the UK, it's like 10 to 15 pounds, you may as well get the eight gig one anyway. That's definitely my recommendation. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt with its next gen patch applied here, 1080p once again with the high settings and TAAU enabled. Now, of course you can lower some of the settings across all the games if you're looking for a higher average FPS or you want to play at a higher resolution. Perhaps you'd rather play at 1440p with lower settings. Here though, I think 1080p, as I've said before, is definitely the place to be with this card. And in The Witcher 3, 66 FPS was the average with, again, solid 1.1% low. So, so far, so good. The 580 is really doing quite well and it's an absolute travesty that according to the, the Steam hardware survey it's being used by like 0.74% of people who took part in the survey which is a real shame considering cards like the 1060 are still within the top 10. It, it blows my mind that this isn't being used more. Maybe it is and 580 users just don't get the Steam hardware survey or something. I don't know. Red Dead Redemption 2, now I usually go with console equivalent settings, but I found that the medium settings give a slightly better visual outcome, especially when combined with the ultra textures. I'm also using TAA set to medium, and here we were still able to average over 60 FPS, again with really nice 1.1% lows, even in the busy town of Valentine. I'm sure the 6 core i5 is definitely helping here. Now, would I recommend pairing a card like this with a CPU like this? Well, I think if you've got the budget for 
a modern 12th or 13th gen build, you're probably not going to go with a 580 realistically. However, if you're putting together a modern i3 machine and you want to upgrade later, you could certainly stick a 580 in that system. You've spent less overall on your PC and you've still got a CPU that can handle a higher end card down the line. So that's worth bearing in mind. I think realistically, realistically though, the 580 is probably going to end up in a more modest overall system. Definitely in pairing with something like the 2600 we tested a while ago. Hogwarts Legacy now, I think this has actually improved a little bit with a few patches. 1080p medium preset with TAA low. I wasn't expecting at least 60 FPS here and I certainly wasn't expecting percentile lows like this. I know they're not brilliant, but from what I've tested in the past, well, I've seen some serious problems with this one. 47 and 33 were the numbers. In and around Hogsmeade, the game remained a lot steadier and consistent than I thought it would, so definitely playable on the 580. Perhaps I was, I was pushing it a little bit with the medium preset. You could definitely go with low to improve the average in those percentile figures, but this was all about pushing the card as much as I could and still getting at least 60 frames per second. Just like in a lot of games that I've tested, FSR is also available today too. Okay, so speaking of games that I think have improved since launch, The Last of Us Part 1, again with medium and FSR balanced. I know I could have gone with low, just like in Hogwarts Legacy, and that probably would have made more sense. But the performance wasn't actually that much different with the 580, yet the visuals were noticeably worse. So I thought, why not stick with medium, enable FSR balanced, and honestly... The difference between native 1080p and FSR balanced on my monitor to my terrible vision isn't really that significant, so I thought we may as well enable that and hit almost 60 FPS with what a really good 1.1% nose in this area. I mean, this is only a small snippet of what you can expect. There's no in-game benchmark run in The Last of Us Part 1, so things may differ depending on where you are, what sort of enemies are on screen, but in this segment, it actually held up really consistently with this card, which was very surprising. I was expecting far worse percentile figures. Cyberpunk 2077 again, definitely could have gone with lower settings, probably low across the board with high textures would have made sense. We could of course keep high crowds, but here with FSR set to auto, which actually doesn't look too different from native, we were seeing 57 FPS with solid 1.1% lows. I think the difference in this video, um, in comparison to that Ryzen 2600 video is that we are using a faster processor now. So that's gonna help with those percentile figures and it will definitely help when, if you decide to use a card like this one with a modern system, a fast CPU will certainly help out in a lot of today's latest and greatest games. But as far as this combination goes, this was a very playable and acceptable result as far as I'm concerned. I know I'm still using the Resident Evil 4 demo I don't think performance is going to be that much different. I do keep meaning to buy the full game because I'm actually really excited to play it. I've just got a massive backlog of titles that I'm working through. Here, with the prioritised performance preset, 81 FPS was the average. There were a few dips and drops below 60. That's why I kept the preset at prioritised performance, just so that when the game did drop, it didn't feel that heavy. As you can see, these percentile lows are pretty close together, so not really much stutter to speak of here. Just a little bit of a dip in performance in those busier areas, like the village itself at the start of this level. But so far, so good. Again, it's a pretty solid result here. Fortnite, now I definitely recommend going with lower settings for this one um, because you are playing online and competitively. So you probably want to go with low if you want to make the most out of the 580 and get as many frames as you can. Maybe even performance mode. I wanted to push this card though. Um, as much as I could. So high preset with 100% 3D res and TAA. This still gave us at least 60 FPS and the 1% and 0.1% low were still good as well. No complaints in Fortnite, but as I said, if you're playing competitively, you're gonna to wanna to think about utilizing lower settings because all the game, although the game looks nice like this, probably isn't worth using these settings with this card, but there we go, it's up to you. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone, the same can be said really, you're probably going to want to go with lower settings, especially as the 0.1% low suffered a bit here. 
This did feel a little bit choppy in certain places, but overall the result was fairly solid with the balanced preset and SMAA T2X set to normal. The actual Warzone, um, no, Modern Warfare 2 itself, sorry, does perform slightly better from what I've seen in my tests. I do wonder if I should perhaps add both back to the benchmarks or take Warzone out and add Modern Warfare 2 back in, but let me know what you think. As for Warzone 2 though, yeah, it's, the performance is fine, but perhaps I'd recommend slightly lower settings or maybe an upscaling method to be enabled if you want higher frames. Finally then we have Elden Ring, this has a 60fps cap in place by default, of course high textures here with high AA. Now underneath this was the medium preset, I set things to medium first and then just adjusted the texture and anti-aliasing settings. This made sure that we hit the cap of 60, although there were a few little dips and drops here and there which was to be expected. You could definitely drop the settings a little bit and the game would still look fairly decent, but you're still going to hit 60 FPS overall if you choose to go with medium like I've done here. Now overall, the RX 580 in 2023, I think it's still very impressive, especially if you pair it with a fairly modern machine. Let's say you build a modern i3 13100F PC, you think, oh, I'll just upgrade the graphics card later, I'll buy something cheap for now. Something like this might do. Um, realistically though, let's say you're building a Ryzen 5 3600 rig or an i5 10400 build something like that you know something a little bit older the 580 is going to be the perfect addition to that budget setup and it'll work well with older cpus as well i mean you could still stick it in an i7 4770 system and it would work really well in pairing with that aging quad core if you enjoyed this one leave a like down below leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already let me know if you want me to test the 4 gig version of this card in the comments below and perhaps make a comparison and hopefully i'll see all of you in the next one